Welcome back to the class on electrical emissions too. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about the equivalent circuit and phasor diagram of a synchronous motor. First, we are going to see the parameters of synchronous motor. This is a stator winding which is equal to the three phase winding which is discussed by 1.3 gc circle in space. So finally, three terminals are taken outside. For these three terminals, we are giving a three phase supply. On the rotor side, we assume the two poles are present here. For this rotor, we have to give the DC excitation. For giving to going to give the excitation to the field winding, make sure that the rotor also will be rotating in the same direction. The speed is also equal to the synchronous. Rotating field is creating from the stator winding, which is running at a synchronous speed. Now, by means of external means, we are rotating the rotor near to the synchronous speed. So, once the rotor speed is near to the synchronous speed, at that point we are give, going to give the DC excitation to the rotor. So, there is a magnetic locking between the stator flux and the rotor. So, the rotor also will be running same direction of the stator flux. The speed is also the synchronous speed in this case. Both are running at a constant speed. Now, in the air gap, there is an interaction between the nothing but this rotating flux and the rotor flux. There is a one flux is creating an air gap, the resultant of these two. Now, what are the parameters of having a stator winding mean? The stator is winding is made of the copper, it has a some amount of resistance. The first parameter is the resistance of the stator winding. When the current is passing through the stator winding, this flux will be creating, the some amount of flux will be leaking and linking with the own turn, which is also sinusoidal, so the voltage will be in a stator winding. To represent the physical phenomena, we are taking the leakage reactions for the stator winding. The one more effect is that when the armature current is passing through the stator winding, the flux is creating, which is affecting the main flux, that is nothing but the armature reaction. That armature reaction we are represented with a fictitious reactance that is XC. The stator winding has a three parameters. One is armature resistance, leakage reactance, and the armature reaction phase. So one more parameter is that because of this rotating flux, there is a voltage will be induced in stator winding that is opposite the supply voltage. That's why we are calling that voltage as a counter voltage, nothing but EB. The magnitude of the EB is highly depending upon how much current is passing through the field winding of a synchronous motor. That means ideal mission, the applied voltage and counter EMF in a stator winding is exactly opposite. But practically it has some amount of losses are there. So there is some delay angle is there between the supply voltage and counter voltage in a stator winding. That we are going to see in the phase diagram. These are the different parameters of a stator winding. We use nothing but a per phase supply voltage. RA is nothing but a per phase resistance. XL is nothing but a perfect leakage reaction. XA is nothing but a perfect armature reaction reaction. XS is nothing but a perfect synchronous reactions, nothing but a sum of XL plus XA. EB is nothing but a counter EMF induced in a stator winding due to the rotating. Now we are going to draw the equivalent circuit. This is the equivalent circuit of a synchronous motor. This is supply voltage, this is XA, this is XL. Some of these two is nothing but a synchronous reactor. This is the armature resistance, this is the counter EMF. IA is nothing but a armature current. Now we are going to see the phasor diagram synchronous motor for the different field current. Initially, we are assuming that the magnitude of EB is less than the V. Nothing but we are applying the field current such a way that the EB is less than the V. We have taken the y axis as well as x axis, and the x axis we have taken the voltage. So EB lacks V by some angle. All vectors are rotating in anti-clockwise direction. This angle is nothing but a delta, nothing but a load angle. In this case, we are assuming that EB is less than the V, nothing but under excitation. Now, the phasor sum of these two is nothing but ER, the resultant voltage which is applied in a chatter winding. Next, armature current, the angle between the ER and IA is nothing but a theta, which is highly depending upon the parameters of stator winding. Here, we have taken the EB equal to V, R. EB less than the V also, both are same. The angle between the ER and IA is theta, it is a constant for a given synchronous motor. The pi is nothing but the angle between the voltage and the current. If the magnitude of back EMF nothing but counter EMF is equal to V, whatever the current is taken by the synchronous motor that is a lagging current. The excitation where the magnitude of EB equal to V is nothing but a normal excitation. 
Suppose if we decrease the field current through the synchronous motor so that E B less than the V. Again we have taken the V. The magnitude of E B less than the V. Again we are finding the feather sum of these two that is E R. I mean it's a parallel theorem. This is E R. This is delta. This is also the delta. Now the current lacks E R by fixed angle because that is the theta. That is constant. So in this case also the current lacks a V by pi angle. Nothing but a, if the field current is normal excitation or under excitation, the synchronous motor will be operating as a lagging power factor, which is taking a reactive power from the supply. In third case, we are adjusting the field current such a way that we are increasing the EB so that make sure that the IA is come and fall on the V. Nothing but unity power factor. This is V. This is EB. This is the resultant vector E R. Now the I A come on fall on the V. This angle is nothing but a theta. Now the angle between the V and I A is nothing but a zero degree, nothing but unity power factor. In this case, we made the E B is greater than the V by changing the field current. This is nothing but over excitation. If further increases, this is V, this is E B. The magnitude E B further increases by changing the field current. If we find the resultant of these two, that gives the E R. Now we are locating the I A because the angle between the E R and I A is constant. That is theta. Now the angle between the I A and V is a pi. So from this feather diagram, you can ensure that the synchronous motor will be operating as a leading power factor. Nothing but as the synchronous motor is giving the reactive power to the system. So by changing the field current in a synchronous motor, change the power factor of a synchronous motor from lagging to the leading. The field current at which counter EMF is equal to the applied voltage is nothing but a normal excitation. The field current such a way that the magnitude of the counter EMF is less than the applied voltage is nothing but a under excitation. The field current such a way that V B is greater than the V that is nothing but a over excitation. Under the excitation, the synchronous motor will be operating as a lagging power factor. For the over excitation, the synchronous motor will be operating as a leading power factor. For a given load. The power factor is governed by the field excitation, a weak field current producing a lagging armature current, and a strong field produce a leading armature current. At unity power factor, only the armature current will be the minimum. During the lagging and leading, also the armature current will be increased. Thank you very much. If you have any doubt, you can ask me directly, or you can ask me in the comment box of the YouTube channel. So that I am always welcome to answer all your questions.